Hello, hello everyone. As usual, I will quickly show you the basic build before I show the gameplay, so you guys know what you should be looking out for. Um, Consumable-wise, very standard, running of course uh, the premium consumables, which you can pay for with credits, but since this is a press account and I have 200,000 doubloons, I don't really care. Um, Upgrade-wise, main armaments mod 1. Torpedo turret survival, um, engine boost because it's so strong on the French cruisers, longer AA range because the reduced dispersion isn't really that powerful on a cruiser in general, better rudder shift because well um, your rudder shift isn't really that special to begin with so you kind of really need this upgrade. And of course uh, the 3 million upgrade is the faster reload at the cost of turret traverse. And then we have the legendary upgrade, increased firing elevation of artillery. Now the thing with this is of course it gives you 8% range, it gives you 12% main battery loading time which means even faster reload. So we have two reload modes. The big downside is of course that we're giving up, not only are we giving up 10% concealment because we're not slotting this one, we're also losing another plus 10% because of the penalty on this module. So ultimately we have basically minus 20% concealment um, or plus 20% detectability. And that means our concealment is a pretty staggering 15.5. Captain build wise, uh, we have priority target, expert loader, turret traverse, because we kind of need it with all the penalties we're uh, getting, we get it down to 32.6. This isn't the special French captain, if we had him then we'd have some improvements, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Adrenaline rush, superintendent, demolition expert, vigilance and concealment expert. Um, I did finally, I did choose to take concealment expert even with this build, because uh, <laughs> if you don't run this, the concealment is just so stupid. I can show you guys real fast. The concealment without this is 17.7 .7 and <laughs> That's just so absolutely absurd that I did want to limit it to at least 15.5. It's not usable in any sense or by any means, but it does at least mean that you won't get spotted directly from spawn, especially on maps that are very punishing like that, uh, for example, hotspot and things like that. Anyway, um, what you should look out for is obviously times when the concealment becomes an issue and just how good the range and the reload or how much it actually helps the ship itself. Moving on to some actual gameplay. Now, the Henry IV has always been a bit of a niche ship. Uh, it doesn't have the concealment of the Zhao, it doesn't quite have the firepower of the Hindenburg. It's kind of in between them both. Uh, you, like, you like playing the ship on flanks, just like you do with the Hindenburg and the Zhao, um, but it never really had quite the same impact. Because, well, it had firepower, it didn't quite have quite quite enough, the shell velocity was a bit too slow, especially at long ranges. Um, people compare it with, with Moskva, people try to compare it with different ships, but ultimately it's always set in a kind of weird spot. It gives up armor, it gives up shell velocity, it gives up DPM, and in return it gains a lot of speed, a lot of maneuverability on the map. Um, it's already quite a fast ship, and then you add in the speed boost and of course the module that increases the speed boost as you can see here and it lasts four and a half seconds and this of course greatly boosts your normal capabilities your normal maneuverability to the extent that you actually become a very very agile ship on the seas as long as you maintain your speed and it makes you quite hard to get hits on but certainly not impossible especially if you're slowing down like i was behind the island um the big difference with this module is the raw firepower. The raw Dakka Dakka is this is now really gonna give me a flat broadside. The French AP is very strong. It's very strong. It's not as fast as the Moskva, but the penetration is very good, uh, even at longer ranges. So given that kind of broadside, yeah, not a good idea. There's a DD in the cap that I could be shooting, but honestly this Zhao messed up big time and uh, I kind of want to get some punishment in on him. Honestly, and that DD in the cap is about to go down regardless, so I don't really care too much about him. We got a buffalo pushing in with radar, and once, they, once he's in radar range, I will be able to help him. Right now, punishing the Zhao means that the Zhao can't shoot our DDs, which is basically... Instead of uh, helping my DDs by killing the enemy DDs, I'm helping my DDs by negating the biggest threat. A Cleveland has parked nose in, and the French HE is, of course, extremely potent against 
any... Well, it's potent against many other ships, mostly because it has 240mm guns, but especially against cruisers, very consistent uh, pins, and the fire chances are actually quite good. The increased range comes in here, of course. 20.6 km range is a lot of range on a cruiser. Especially considering we're not running spotter plane or any sort of range module. We're just using the legendary module. So this gives it a lot more flexibility on the map because, well, you can quite easily just lob shells on targets like the Izumo here. A nose in Izumo is such a juicy target for HE. Mostly because the Izumo armor is only 32mm and, well, this reload. I have no intention of using my heal because I'm getting a bit of a reload boost from uh, Adrenaline Rush. This combined with the legendary module and the reload module, and you can see just how much DPM the ship pumps out. Like, I haven't really been doing that much special here, but we're already at 51k damage, 53k, and it just keeps going up and up and up, and um, I feel like this legendary module allows the Henry to activate its win condition earlier. The, in order to win, like, different cruisers have different win conditions. In the Zhao, it's you sneak up close, so you maybe blap a DD early on, or then later in the game you just start burning down battleships. So, But you can activate a pretty early win condition just by surprising people with your stealth and getting some early blaps in. Radar cruisers, their win condition is map control and just radaring enemy DDs and giving you caps and so forth. So they activate their win conditions very early as well. The problem with the Henry IV was always you needed time. You need time to make your damage have an impact. Because it doesn't really have the stealth to get close to caps, it doesn't have the radar. Um, you need to make use of this DPM to have an impact and actually turn the game into your favor. And this that's why this legendary module fits the playstyle extremely well, because, well, you want to be shooting, you want to be dealing damage. Yes, you're giving up a lot of stealth for it, but the benefits you gain are quite worth it, in my opinion. Because, uh, well, you were never going to play it around stealth to begin with. Would this be viable in competitive? That's a really hard one. That's a really, really hard one. I burned down the Izumo. After all the damage I've dealt to him, I finally burned him down. Amusingly, a Kutuzov calls me a thief. But he will, I don't think the Kutuzov even had range on him. Or it, does, it didn't even look like he was shooting him. And I'm pretty sure I did the majority of the damage to him as well. Cleveland Park full broadside. AP would be very good here, but I already had HE loaded, and honestly, I quite like shooting HE at Cleveland's. I like shooting HE at, well, <laughs> not because I can detonate them, <laughs> but because they have such thin armor, and they have no heal, and they have such a low HP pool, that blapping, like hitting a Cleveland with... 5-6-5k HE volleys is enough to just kill him. You don't even need Citadels because he has so, such a small HP pool. And um, honestly, I rarely bother with AP against them. Only if they give me that flat perfect broadside and I already have AP loaded. Otherwise, just HE kill them. Because he has no armor to shatter the HE and uh, he has no health, he has no heal. Very easy to punish that ship. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, would you run this in competitive? Very doubtful. Very doubtful. I mean, it's fun, it's comfortable, but if you run this in competitive, you will struggle so, so hard to ever disengage. And you will be spotted the entire time. And you can't really be spotted the entire time in competitive. It just doesn't work, like in, in clan battles, ranked, whatever. Being spotted the entire time in a cruiser means constantly being shot at. And while that's something the Henry is quite good at living with, thanks to the speed and so forth, and the range with this module especially, um, it would gr greatly limit its effectiveness. And I think it would limit its effectiveness to the extent that any bonuses gained from the legendary module will be lost. So for competitive, unlikely we will ever see this module see much usage. For random battles though, I like it a lot. I think it's fun. Because, uh, as I mentioned, it allows you to bring damage to bear earlier. It, it allows you to be more effective at one of your primary roles, which is dealing damage. And it gives you consistent damage, because it gives you more range, which means um, you have more... Well, if you look at the minimap, look, at, look where my range reaches, that white circle. I can shoot all the way to the other side of the map, to the other side of A, where the enemy teams are pushing up. I can reach all the way over there, while at the same time I'm helping my team um, support or 
push in this buffalo who's about to die. I am already moving towards A though, I don't want to waste time here. So, I really like it as a gameplay option. It comes with a heavy penalty, 20% concealment on a cruiser is absolutely a very heavy penalty, but it does fit the playstyle extremely well and it does help mitigate one of the greatest weaknesses of the Henry, which has always been the DPM. Oh, the Neptune is giving me a broadside. I mentioned French AP. Oh, I'm undetected behind the island as well. Poor guy. This is going to be nasty. And nasty it is. No devastating, sadly, but a triple citadel and, well, 27k damage. He pops his heal, which is enough to keep him alive for now. And he's going to... looks like he's going to ground into the island. Worth noting, I mentioned that this ship has 240mm guns, which, of course, means that you can overmatch the bow and the stern. So I put my crosshair right on his stern, and I know that my shells will overmatch it, because 240mm does, unlike 203 and I overmatch straight through his stern and I citadel him, but sadly I don't get the kill. Still though, another 10k volley. And instantly, without any hesitation, I already switch targets and I'm shooting the next target. And that's kind of what I mean, It, you're constantly able to deal damage. There's almost no point where your guns aren't blazing when you're running this build, you're just shooting, 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 shooting. And that's something you always want to be doing in a Henry IV. And this module just helps you do it even more effectively. So, for random battles, I would absolutely slot this. It's it's a lot of fun. It's absolutely a lot of fun. Um, I like I like modules that. Well, to be able to replace the stealth module is a heavy task, and giving up and putting a 10% penalty on top of that that is a really really costly thing. But the bonuses are really, really good. It's range and reload. Two things you pretty much want on any HE spammer in the game, let alone a Henry IV. So, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely enjoying this module. Absolutely enjoying it. Competitive, I don't really see the value because, well, not being able to disengage, but in random battles, just fun. It's absolutely fun. Um, I think this is an example of a really well-designed module where... Uh, the, the negatives are clear, but the positives are also large enough to offset the issue. And, well, we're gonna boost speed boost in here. Full speed boost. Friede de Grosse, I think he got Hydra active because he dodged those torps, and it looks like he is bailing. But we are just gonna run straight at him. This 4.5 minute speed boost, it is so enjoyable. This time we're gonna pop a heal because we're actually getting very close to that battleship, and... Uh, as I mentioned, the Henry IV doesn't have really any armor to deal with that AP, so it's worth popping the heal just in case. Surprisingly low AP volley, because as I mentioned, the AP is very strong. The French AP is no joke. The next volley looks better. Yeah, that's more like it. What was that, 8? 8k? 8k AP volley. Using the torps to estimate his speed. We got a 5k volley, high caliber as well. Been a bit unfortunate with getting these kills, maybe we, we can actually get this one. 9k volley with the AP, and with this reload as well. I mean, look at our reload, and if you had a French captain with the improved AR, um, I, I'm, you can, I'm pretty sure you can reach almost the Moines levels of reload on these guns. And a Henry IV, with that range, shell velocity, and almost the Moines reload, <laughs> that is disgusting. Hilariously disgusting. And uh, so much fun, but still absolutely disgusting. Let's see, what is our reload? If we shoot that, 8.6 seconds. That is, wow. I mean, if you get down to, a, let's say, a quarter of a health and you got the French captain with the improved AR. <whistles> oh my, oh my. That is something we're going to have to try. I'm going to actually, I might try it today on my stream. I'm going to be, I'm going to slap the French captain on this guy and we will see if we can... If we can make it happen, just to see how absurd we can get this reload. My overall opinions on this uh, this legendary upgrade have been very positive, though. Um, I was skeptical, because giving up so much concealment is such a downgrade, but... It's kind of like the Khabarovsk. You don't really need concealment, because you want to be shooting all the time. Um, if you're playing your Henry IV optimally, meaning your guns are always... You're, you're always gunboating, you're always shooting, um, then the concealment is a pretty useless module to begin with. In fact, I know many people who have given up concealment just to, get, just to get improved rudder shift, simply because they have the same philosophy. We want to be shooting at all times. So switching rudder shift for this is also 
perfectly viable choice. In fact, it kind of speaks to the design of the Henry IV that it's one of the few cruisers where you have so many options now for the fifth module slot. You can go Concealment, you can go Rudder Shift, or you can go this legendary module. And I think all three of them are equally viable in uh, random battle. So <laughs> that that's a sign of really good... Oh, that's that's a sign of really good design, and th I don't think any other cruiser can b boast being able to do that kind of thing. Maybe the Zal, but because the legendary module and rudder shift are very good on that ship as well. But giving a concealment is a much bigger deal on the Zal. Still, though, the game does end. Broke 200k barely at the end. Um, overall, though, this was a pretty short game, but mostly it was just to show the pure firepower the ship has. Uh, if we look at the team score. We get 2.4k basic speed. Uh, sadly, the enemy team didn't really get any kills, so this game ended very, very quickly. In fact, if we look at the detailed report, we'll see that it was only a less, less than a 30 minute game. So that's kind of what I mean, though. The ability to just deal so much damage so quickly in this ship is very nice. The Izuma, I did 47k damage to the Izuma as well. 21, the Cleveland detonated though, but the Friedrich Grosse, another 50k to him as well, another 45k to the Neptune, 25k to the Zao. Like, uh, you just deal damage, 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 and this module greatly reinforces that. I like it. I am a fan. I'm absolutely a fan of this one. Oh, and here's, here's a bonus ending picture. I was reported three times for this game, which I thought was pretty amusing. Not really sure who did it, but reporting press accounts, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am gonna doubt that Wargaming will be banning our press accounts. But I appreciate the effort, though. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary.